Hi there, thanks for watching. Quick video today regarding the Canon 1DS Mark II. Is it really worth considering as a budget full frame DSLR for 2019? First of all, big thanks to Tony for lending me his 1DS for this review. Um, most of my professional career I've shot with Nikon Pro bodies, so the Nikon D3X, Nikon D3s, and um, we shot for a couple of years with the Hasselblad HD39 digital bodies. And I thought the Nikon DSLR bodies were solid, but this thing feels amazing. It just feels solid, dense, almost bulletproof in your hand. I can honestly say it's the most impressive camera I've ever held, which all goes really well for the user experience. But let's have a quick look at the specs and what you're going to get for your money for this nearly 15 year old DSLR. You're going to get a 16.7 million pixel full frame CMOS sensor, four frames per second burst mode, dual card slots and a weather sealed professional body. All sounds amazing so far doesn't it? Obviously there's a few compromises compared to modern cameras. The first and the major one is the small low resolution screen on the back of the camera. It's a 2 inch 230 pixel TFT monitor which becomes almost useless in bright light outside. On the second time I had a wander out with the camera I was lucky enough it was overcast and the screen was quite usable. You can zoom in as you can see here, you can check focus um, not as easily obviously as you can on the larger 3.2 inch what, over a million dot pixel screens that we get on modern cameras but it's something that you still can do. Sample shot taken of the bench uh, on a quick wander with the camera focused on the front armrest here couldn't see on the screen particularly easily if I'd nailed focus but trusted the camera's autofocus system and it, it's nailed the shot, it's focused where I wanted it to. And this is what we're after I believe with this camera here, this is what I think is the full frame feel um, you get in that extra depth of field. It's just shot on a 50mm 1.8 STM lens, so it's a cheap lens, but you're getting that lovely creamy soft background. And that's one of the reasons obviously you choose to use a full frame camera over say a crop frame camera. Shallow depth of field is easier to achieve on a full frame DSLR. Okay, the menu system can seem quite antiquated, but I really don't consider that to be much of an issue at all. You really don't need to be in these menus very often. All of the controls are there at your fingertips from ISO, white balance drive, exposure compensation, flash exposure compensation. Everything's there with physical buttons. You don't need to be in these menus too often. The camera's ISO range runs from 100 up to 1600, but it's expandable to 50 or 3200 at either end of the range. And I found the files up to ISO 1600 perfectly usable. Low noise levels, plenty of detail, so no problem there. Okay, so image quality wise, we've discussed that the ISO is good. You've got Canon colors. The Canon color science is fantastic. It's one of the best out there, possibly along with Fujifilm in my experience. You've got fantastic levels of details. Uh, the details that you can take close up shots like this look great. 16.7 million pixels, all the resolution you need. So then question time, would you spend your money, approximately 350 to 400 pounds on one of these antiquated cameras in 2019? Well, if you go into it aware that Canon no longer service, so if this camera dies on you, you're possibly just going to have to throw it away or sell it for spares, and you're only interested in photography, because obviously there's no video mode at all on this camera, then yes, why not? It's a fantastic camera still. It produces professional quality images still. Absolutely no doubt about that. But to my mind, you've got to weigh this camera up against the Canon 5D Mark II as well, which has slightly more resolution, slightly better image quality. But the big one for me, it also has the video mode built in, which this camera doesn't have. And I hope this video has helped you make up your mind whether you'll want to spend your money on the 1DS Mark II as well. Any questions, please pop them in the comments below. Again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.